Welcome to Talking Giants presented by SeatGeek. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Pennick. And we've got our edge and defensive line preview. We're going through three edge players, five defensive linemen. One's like a mixed edge D lineman, but he's really a defensive lineman in Brandon Dorless. We had to cut a guy out of this episode because he got a DWI. Justin, how are you doing? Bobby Skinner, what, three weeks until we're rocking and rolling and you're going to be in the great city of New York. We were grinding today. We missed the eclipse. We missed the freaking moon going over the freaking sun uh, because we were f- we're filming Talking Giants. And then also, hey, shameless plug, check out uh, JM Football. There's a first-round mock draft. Everybody loves mock drafts. Uh, Chris Rose, Bobby, and I, we filmed a first-round mock draft for all 32 teams. Chris Rose chose the Giants pick. Um, so go check that out on JM Football. Definitely. Um just before we get into all these these pass rushers, run stoppers, this episode is brought to you by one special person. It's just Brian. Brian's got no last name. It may be the dog from Family Guy. Justin, who the hell is Brian? Brian is the newest person that went to patreon.com slash talking giants for $2 a month plus some other tiers. You get to hang out with us live while we record the shows. Bobby is sending you some stickers in the mail. Plus, there's some shirt raffles. Patreon.com slash Talk Giants. First of all, you want to be there because get ready. Um, you know, just just get this ready and get this prepared now. You want to be there draft night. You know, the, we're going to be having an episode for our first round reaction. And then especially even when we do our draft recap, you're going to want to be there and you're going to want to hear that before anybody else. And that's a, that's a pretty good perk if you ask me. I also have my draft hoodie on right now. Ah, Love, love the logo. All right. Make sure to get that for the draft. All right, Justin. Uh, we'll, we'll start with the edge guys in this draft. And obviously the Giants aren't in play for Jared Verse, Dallas Turner, like to law to. Um, I like Jared Verse the most out of those guys, though. I agree. Um, watching him, I, I really fell in love. Like, I think I think the Falcons should take it. I don't think he should go any lower than the Falcons at pick eight. I know people want the Falcons to take a weapon, but he he's really good. I like the power in his game, and I think he's got, like, even more potential as a pass rusher. Justin... The fourth guy that seems to be going off for the edges, though, is Penn State's own. Somebody we looked at in the way too early draft preview last year, and that's Chop Robinson, uh, the edge out of Penn State, Justin. He is a tough player to project because he's six foot three, 254 pounds. Like that size is fine, even though he looks a little smaller on film, 32 and a half inch arms. Because the dude is an unreal athlete like it's just unmatched the type of athleticism that he brings to the edge spot justin um you know and he had a 20 percent pass rush win rate which is awesome you know but he also didn't put up a lot of pass rush production and he just he does he gets swallowed up by size right like it's either you win around the corner or you don't win at all with him but like he is somebody that the giants had a top 30 visit in and it's someone who would like if he fell to pick forty seven, which I think is very possible because there will be other those same concerns with other teams. Is someone like, oh well, you can't take edge, but you may have a guy who just has unmatched athleticism for that spot in the NFL in the middle of the second round. Like I don't think that's a reckless pick, despite the Giants' edge situation right now. No, and we we know you know this is a this is a new Giants defense, and Shane Bowen really does like these edge rushers and. You know, there's major question mark. The Giants do have an edge three question mark. Uh, I just don't think you can rely on Aziz Ojolari at this point. So, and also like a good football player is a good football player at a premium position. Yeah, I mean, crazy, crazy first step athleticism, speed, and quickness. You talked about it. I, like you can really see how the explosion comes from his legs and his lower half. He knows how to use it very well. Um, you know, the two questions that I have: moves, counters. Where are they? I don't think they're really there. He's very young at 21 years old, so that's like a Joe Shane little plus-plus thing. Also, the athleticism is a Joe Shane plus-plus thing. He's not afraid to set an edge and play the run, um, and something that I think that he's going to be very good at in the NFL because he's so athletic, he's going to chase down backside runs if he's unblocked. Like, we, uh, hey, as Giants fans, we've seen that happen a lot to us. Um, I think, like, that's gonna that could be a strength of his in the NFL. Like, if you're not blocking him on that backside, he's going to chase down. Bobby, he's not afraid to to operate a bull rush even though like he has the speed and he can bend the corner a little bit and you know he can run around you he's not afraid to you know operate from you know with a bull rush and and use power it's just the question of you know with being so light 
how effective is that going to be in the NFL? And also he has really short arms, so he can't really like extend away from guys either and like really push. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, he's got all that speed in the world that he can work speed to power. And if you hit if you get someone in the chest, you know, at that speed, it doesn't matter who you are, you're gonna get that guy in their heels, especially if they are working to protect the corner and they're worried about your speed, you get them a little off balance and then bam, you put it you put it on them, right? So there that's good stuff there. But it's just unless it's like just pure speed to power boom, once he has hands on him, it is over, right? And he yeah. wasn't someone that I didn't like and getting the way too early uh process last year. I think he got better this year. Um and even used his speed better against better Against better offensive lines, where I thought in 2022, good offensive linemen kind of kind handled him pretty well. You know, particularly the Ohio State offensive tackle duo of Dewan Jones and Paris Johnson. But man, he just it's it's like watching and fast forward him get up around the corner. Now he's it's got crazy. kind of short steps, so he doesn't have like the those long strides where he can do it in three steps. But he just gets you gets on you in a hurry, which he may not be the you know, the full package, but he's going to test you all game long. And that speed's going to change games, right? Like he's going to get sacks. He's going to be, he's going to be a guy who ends drives because that speed is unmatched. You know, you look at Aziz Ojolari, who doesn't have the best power in the world and obviously had a down year last year, but like when he's healthy, like he's got the speed, he's got the bend that he can rack up sacks, even, even his rookie year where Chop Robinson's going to do that. So he's going to have value. It's just, what does his ceiling end up be? Or does he... I think he's better than him and the metrics look better. But does he end up being like Kalevon Chase on it and, and 2020, right? Where he's got this blazing speed off the edge. The only guy to get a sack off of Andrew Thomas in college football. Yet, like, he just hasn't developed in the NFL because he's basically all... He's all speed to his game. And NFL right. tackles are going to be a lot better. And they're not going to give you the hands as much, right? Like if I'm if I'm facing him, I'm only worried about I'm not I'm not worried about my hands. I am just worried about staying in front of him. And if he works speed to power, just be able to re-anchor, which most tackles are going to be uh, be able to do. But he, I mean, he, out of the guys we're talking about today, from edge and D lineman, he is the highest rated um, guy. I, I have him as a high second round yep. player, as he, as he should be, just because you you want to invest in that athleticism. But I mean, it, hey. Uh, this is something that we've done since since we've started. Like I, you know, I have you evolve every year in how you look at players. I evolve every year looking at players, but still, something that stays the same with me is I do need to see some sort of, you know, not you can't just be an athlete to be a pass rusher. You got to have some moves. You got to have some counters. You got to be able to use your hands. Um, and I just don't think he's there yet. And this is why he's being viewed as a second rounder. And you know, maybe if he had more of a bag with him. Then maybe he's a first round pick. Uh, but we're talking about a guy that's a second rounder. And it's funny how you talked about the level of competition that he faced and how, you know, good good tackles uh, did well against him in 2022 and he got better with that. I have a note that it Chop Robinson feels like one of those players who will do well against bad tackles where he could take advantage of poor technique and poor athleticism, but the good ones who can move, he will struggle against them. Like that's what I think yeah, he's absolutely. going to be Especially in the NFL. early in his career. That that's go- yeah. that's going to happen with him. Yeah, and I have your prototypical Penn State edge rusher. There's also a prototypical Penn State edge rusher who's a number two uh, that we're going to talk about, I believe, next. But or uh, your prototypical Penn State edge rusher who a good athlete, but you want so much more out of him. And I, I'm saying, I know we have a lot of Penn State fans that listen to the show. The coaching is insane. Where every year, E.B. Katie was one of those guys too. Like, oh, look at this guy as an athlete. And I think E.B. Katie had some moves, but he was he was just really good at like one he or just two. Just worked moves. laterally, which we'll talk about with with. Uh, um, Adisa Isaac and um, yeah. you know you you brought up uh, Luketa who was an athlete and then what was the one that the Ravens drafted um uh, he changed oh, we, his changed his we name were, we were were well there's also oh, who was the guy that that Paul Dettino said we were gonna draft that was oh, your oh, third oh, gross Matos he was the only one who just didn't have the the speed Odafe Owe uh, yeah Owe yeah yeah so it, just the good athlete but you want so much more out of him and I, I'm really sick and tired of seeing these Penn State edge rushers who are really good athletes come out of the draft all the time, yet they have nothing to their game. Nothing to their game. Like, what are we doing, Penn State? Let's coach these guys up a little bit more. I, I will say Chop Robinson is the best athlete of those guys. Like, nobody, like I think a lot of those guys, they just struggle around the corner. If there's only one thing that Chop Robinson doesn't struggle at, it is getting around the corner. Right, but that's, that's, that's God-given... 
athleticism and, you know, he works at his body. It's not coaching that's, you know, hand swipe or uh, various moves. That's what we're, that's what I'm missing every single year from these Penn State edge rushers is like playing the game of football is something that's like missing from them and the technical side of things. Yeah. Yeah. So, but hey, we, Chot Robinson, a hell of an athlete. He's going to get production. It's just, can we get him, get him stronger, right? In the run game, is he going to get moved off the edge? Yes. Can he make enough negative plays, tackles for losses by, you know, penetrating gaps, um, you know, jumping out, outside in on a guy, you know, taking advantage of an unbalanced offensive lineman, winning every rep versus a tight end. Those are the types of things he's going to need to play a more full-time role in the NFL. So, Chap Robinson, great name, by the way. You said we're going to talk about uh, someone next. I actually disagree. We're not going to talk about that guy next. Okay. Justin, the next guy I want to talk about is Kansas Edge Austin Booker, who's oh. six foot four and a half, two 240 pounds, 33 and 7 eighths inch arms. So it's 34 inch arms. He's only he only played one year, really, right? He was a transfer to Kansas. You know, had fifty six tackles, eight sacks, twelve tackles for loss. So good stats. If there is someone who we look back at this edge class, who are like, man, that mid round guy just hit, right? Because you don't really see that for edge a lot. It's no. it's a very top heavy position. To me, it would be Austin Booker out of Kansas. He just has a natural avoidance of blockers, and yeah, is he raw? Yeah, but he actually, you talk about, he works pass rush moves, right? Like, um, you know, uh, Austin Booker, he'll use a ghost move. He'll spin. He'll use power. He'll long arm you. He'll work lateral. Like, he he will do it all. It's just he's got to get better at it, right? Now, he needs to add, add strength, too. But his long arms allow him to play a little stronger, right? In the run game, he has a good jo- does a good job of shedding blockers. Um, in, the, in the run game, mainly, he needs to get better instincts. There's a time, you know, there was a play where, I think it was Texas where they pulled at him and he just doesn't squeeze down and they get a big long run on him. But he also, you see him learn as the game goes on. Like the left tackle for Texas was getting pretty aggressive with him and he dumped him a couple of times, got him unbalanced. And then the Texas tackle kind of adjusted too. And you saw him towards the end of the game. He just used that, you know, you know, balled up his fists and just, you know, was just chopping those hands off of you, you know, Donkey Kong style. Uh, so to me, he's a traitsy edge with again only one year of production. A good athlete, not the best athlete in the world. You just he knows how to use his length, and his lack of strength to me is not not debilitating. Like there's things that need to get cleaned up. He has a false step that he needs to get better. If he could clean up that false step, his get off will be a lot better. Right now, it's not very very fast, but you see him work pass rush moves, work good Ben, and he's someone who like I would love to. If I if I'm if I'm the team that's drafting him, we're talking about potential, potential, potential. Does he live up to it's the question. But man, he he is the one guy in the mid rounds that I like, man, that like, this is the guy who could figure it all out and really put together more than just a rotational player. Do you want to guess where he is on the media consensus board? Probably in the hundreds. Like like between ninety and one ten. Close with ninety, he's at eighty six. Oh, eighty six. Okay, so, so, so. That's that's kind of right where around where I have him. Like I have him as a high third rounder, so that you know I have yeah. him as a sixty-five to eighty guy. Yeah. Um, was he at the Senior Bowl? Because he's listed as Senior Bowl. Did yeah, he, did yeah, he, he was at out? the Senior Bowl. He didn't didn't flash a ton there, but there was a lot, there was a million guys. It's try hard to watch all of them. Yeah, and for his, sure. His name didn't pop up off to us pre pre Senior Bowl. No. Um, pass rush grade on true pass sets of ninety eight and eighty nine percent pass rush win rate. 92 run stop rate as well. So, I mean, hey, for for there, there are some guys here where if you look at their metrics and their percentiles, it's like yeesh, but this is this is pretty well rounded for uh for for Booker here. Um I will say you, you talked about how Booker learns throughout the game. One of my notes that I have is like his his plan seems to be kind of centered around what the offensive tackle is doing before he, because I, I do agree with you where he has counters. So he's kind of looking to see what the tackle is going to be doing and how he's going to be attacking. And then that's how he counters. And that's how he attacks. I feel like that's a positive, but then I also feel like that's a negative because instead of Booker, maybe taking control on a play and bringing the, bringing the punch to the party, sometimes Booker will wait for the tackle to do something. And then that could be, that could be a detriment a little bit, really slippery player for his length, um, can get across his face, can shoot gaps pretty easily. Couldn't be a couple guys that we're going to talk about that can shoot some gaps today. 
Um, long limbs um, and effort make him very annoying to to keep blocked. Um, you, so those you called him slippery. One of my notes is just he just has a natural avoidance of blockers. Like he just yeah. figures out a way to get off of blocks. And we're not talking about a guy who is just so much faster than everybody. We're not talking about a guy who's so much stronger than everybody. He's just kind of very raw to the game of football. Um, and like the things you need to see him clean up are very like the footwork, right? Get rid of that false step, right? Uh, you know, there's a, some wasted movement. That's not the easiest thing to clean up is just the general footwork. But the false step, we can get rid of that quickly if we just, you know, drill drill it into, like get rid of that that false step. Um, and then the pass rush, like you see him, you know, like I don't have him as high as David Ajabo or anything and, and Ajabo got injured. But it was like Ajabo at least like, it didn't always look natural, but he worked the moves, right? Like he he tried different types of pass rush moves, and like he had a, you know, he has a bag to him. It's just that he doesn't always get to it the quickest or the smoothest. But yeah, um, you know, watching him was was a was a lot of fun. I was like, okay, I, w- I was not expecting an edge out of Kansas to to make me like him, but I I mean, I have him as a high third round pick. And like I said, the point I, the main point I have on him is if there's one guy in the mid rounds that figures it out and becomes like an every down good player, to me that would be Austin Booker. Yeah, man, it's just we mentioned the length and all the shit like that, but 240 pounds. Uh, I, I think that's it's in like the fifth. It's got to be around the. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. It's got to be like less than the fifth percentile of weight. But at least I he mean, has I, the frame to add the weight to it. Yeah. I mean, we also thought Ellerson Smith had the frame to add. The Ellerson Smith too. missed every single game of his career. Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just using, I'm using him as a Giants example of it, it, just a guy that was really light, and I don't know, like 240 pounds is really, really light. Um, so I agree with you, and I, I'm like, oh, and I, like, hey, we could look, you know, hey, he adds 15 pounds and. See, and he sees where we're at, and it's like, all right, well, we, we got a football player here, but it's yeah, and he really, can get knocked really around light. the run game. Like, there's obviously negatives. Um, like he he does need to get stronger. Yeah, you know, but it's like even in even within that, like when he just has single blocks and he doesn't lose like at that first punch, you see really good uh, plays uh, in in the run game. With you know, it. like get that pad level down a little bit, but he 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 knows how to like he just feels like a natural football player. I didn't find his age, by the way. I just couldn't find it. Yeah. Well, when Dane Brugler releases his thing, we'll get legitimate ages on on all of these guys. All right. Next on this list, Justin, is another top 30 visit for the Giants. Another Penn State guy. That's Adisa Isaac. Six foot four, 247 pounds, almost 34 inch arms. Uh, this is probably someone I'm a, a good amount lower than than the cons- consensus on him, you can I don't know what the consensus actually is, but like when you look at mock draft simulators, like he he's usually like a top, like put as a top sixty player in there. Well, why now don't you, you guess? see production like seven and a half sacks, sixteen tackles for a loss, and he is a smart player, especially in the run game, right? Like he takes on the pulls very well. A lot of his tackle for a loss production, Justin, came from the backside of run plays, like just chasing from the backside, getting flat, having those good instincts and good understanding of the run game. Uh, but but I'm just not a big fan of his because all of his pass rush wins come from lateral moves, and you're just you're not, he's not going to have that go in the NFL. If you're Micah Parsons, you have the all the you have the green light to just go lateral. Like if you're T.J. Watt, you have the green light. Adisa Isaac's not going to have that green light, and it's not even amazing at that right at that point. Right, like he's a solid athlete, but he's not some great athlete. And like you mentioned with the Penn State guys, like I have a note, hand usage is late or non-existent. And once the guys are on him, he just cannot disengage from blocks. Like it's just a total lack of strength or ability to use speed to power um, as a pass. This is this is probably, you know, another Penn State guy. I was much higher on the consensus than ever, uh, with Theo Johnson. Adisa Isaac might be the one I'm the lowest on compared to the consensus. So uh, what do you think the consensus ranking is? 60 it's 82 oh okay so the cons- i guess it's just that one mock draft simulator i was looking at. but i view him as like like 140 like that's where i think he should probably be in okay. line okay mind your austin booker is 86 so they have uh adisa isaac higher than austin booker yeah man 
I, this guy almost, I'm going to use a Penn State teammate comparison. He's like a better, more athletic, and he has more in his bag than Jesse Lucetta. And Jesse Lucetta was like, I'm pretty sure he was a day three pick, and he was even rumored to be like moving to off-ball linebacker. He's basically just a special two. teams player. Yeah, but so but Jesse Lucetta, like at the time, I, I liked Jesse Lucetta coming out knowing that he was a day three pick. Knowing that Adisa Isaac is a day, you know, maybe going to be a day two picker, that's at least where he's being projected right now. That's what I don't like. He doesn't really have really advanced numbers. He's really, really light. Um, he takes you know, advantage of college players. Like yeah. that's, and I just don't think he's going to have success for his NFL players. Um, where, again, a lot of this, you know, our college often, a lot of the tackles for a loss are simply just they're running to the opposite side. He gets flat down the line. Penn State does a good job of muddying up the you know the look for the running back, and he makes a tackle for a loss. You know, really good pit taking on pulls and stuff. Whenever he's faced up with a tight end, he does a really good job. But you're not going to be facing college tight ends, and you're not going to be able to chase the backside um, in the NFL consistently to put together like put together that stat sheet that he had, where it says 16 tackles for a loss and, and seven and a half sacks. And again, he's not going to have the green light to work laterally. And it's not going to work anywhere near as well in the NFL either. So this is just a... I just I just don't really like Adisa Isaac as a player. Yeah, I think he's a he's a competitive player. He's going to play hard. I think he has a good amount of quickness and speed. And some like one of the negatives that I have is sometimes can round the arc too much and miss the play and get washed out. So I I, I think there's I think there's something there. Like I think he has some moves like I. More, you know, I gave criticism to Penn State coaching a little while ago. I do think he has some moves, but I do agree with you, like taking advantage of college competition and being a good college player. I think that's, I think that's what Adisa Isaac is. Uh, I like, I think there's something here, but not for day two, not for day two of the draft. No, absolutely. So, um, so what what was the consensus on him? Eighty six, you said. Uh, eighty two. Austin Booker was eighty six. Okay, eighty two. Yes, yeah. See, I, like I'm even like quite a bit lower on that like i can it's fair like let me pull up the did you do any work on gabriel murphy from ucla yeah i like gabriel murphy more now i think gabriel murphy i know we're gabriel, not talking about him gabriel murphy is 107 so like i like gabriel murphy now i actually think gabriel murphy could actually just move to linebacker because it's like i don't know if he has okay. it to play edge in the nfl but he has a great understanding of space um but like here's some of the edge guys I would have ahead of him. So I was like, Chop Robinson, obviously. And I haven't done a lot of them either. Austin Booker, Darius Robinson, who we're not talking about. He's kind of a D-line slash edge. Uh, Javon Solomon, who we talked about with Filato. Jonah Ellis, who we dropped from this uh, this episode because I didn't love him. Um, Gabriel Murphy. And then, is there any other edges that I've done? And then Adisa Isaac. And Adisa Isaac. But I still have, like, there's a lot of... I haven't done Braylon Trice. There's a bunch of guys I haven't done. Um, but, like, out of the guys I've done, he's almost the the, the least on, yeah. on there. Uh, now, I'm, I've gone top-heavy with my draft analysis. But, um, yeah, so I'm not big on Adisa Isaac. So, Justin, let's talk about the defense alignment players. But before we get to the defense alignment, why don't you talk to us about something? I'll talk to you about something, and I didn't even pull it up, but here it is, the DraftKings Sportsbook. Baseball season finally here, and the DraftKings Sportsbook is one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps, giving new customers a swing at turning 55 bucks into $150 instantly in bonus bets with any baseball bet. Turn $5 into $150. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code WORLD. New customers can bet 5 bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets only at the DraftKings Sportsbook with code WORLD. The crown is yours. Gambling prom call 1-800-GAMBLER or in West Virginia. Visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available from, for problem gambling. Call 888-879-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bet bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash baseball for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and, res and responsible gambling resources. 
Bobby Skinner, you will be glad you did. How about those janks, huh? Off to a hot start. You'll be glad you did. Uh, Justin, let's talk about these defensive tackles. This is a light group this year, right? Like we're talking about five of them. Two of them are uh, two out. Of, you know, three out of five are less than three hundred pounds. Now, for the Giants' sake, the two out of the five that we're talking about that are over three hundred are were top thirty visits for the Giants. Um, now we dropped to Vondre Sweat from this because uh, he had the DWI, and I just don't know if the Giants are going to pull the trigger on that. And there was stuff about he was a partier. You know, like, and he was telling teams that that's behind him. Uh, I think he played close to 400 pounds in college. You know, he didn't weigh in at the Senior Bowl, and then he came into the Combine. It was 366, which I think is probably the lightest he's, like, I think that that was very much trimmed down for the Combine, Justin. Where are you at with him? Because I I mocked him to the Giants uh, in the last mock draft. I like him a lot out of, you know, in a class that lacks size. He brings that size, but... Like he seems like someone who is dumb. Like it's always dumb to get a DWI. It's even more dumb to do it three weeks before the NFL draft. All right, listen, this is one of those things where I, I don't know how these guys interview. I don't have the same, you know, backdoor information. There's when there's smoke, there's fire though. Like there's uh, yeah, issues. 100%. But I, I'm, I, I'm not going to act and sit here. Like I'm smart enough to fully like, Oh, oh yeah. I know this about this guy and I'm not going to do it. Right. But here's the thing. You mocked him to the giants in the second round. He, it, it Third. Off the field, th- third? Yeah. Off the field issues aside, it's not making it. I, I, I really don't think. Like, I, I think he's, I think the NFL is starting to value interior defensive linemen, especially knowing that this draft class has so many smaller guys. I think he stands out, and I think there will, off the field stuff aside, he could fall because of that. Talent wise, he's not making it to the third. So that, I don't know. But he, he's never going to finish. Like, he's never going to tackle a quarterback. Like, the max times he will touch a he tackle a quarterback in a season will be three. Yeah. He has no, he's, he's, he's a bad athlete. Like, he's, he'll have pass rush wins that look good on film, but he is someone who is never, ever going to finish at the quarterback. And I just, that's hard to draft for teams in the second round. But I really like him. I love him as a player. You know, I have him as a second round player. Yeah, he he moves, moves. Have I mean, room. he had like he tested bottom of every category in the combine, and again, I think he was way he was weighing way less than he has in his time at Texas. But um, we'll we'll see what happens with him. But it also, if there's one position that I don't care about character concerns that much, it's probably defensive tackle because. You don't need to be doing the most film study in the world, and especially yeah. when you're when you're that size and and that strong. Like you yeah. kind of, I don't I don't need you to be in the peak physical shape. I just yeah. need you to kind of be in elite, a good enough shape. And also for for from a giant standpoint, we're they're they're not looking for a nose tackle. But he plays a lot of three technique, and he'd be better as a pass. Like he played mostly three technique at Texas, and he would be better as a pass rusher at nose tackle. But is he ever going to be a a good pass rusher in the NFL? No, he's not going to be, despite his good pass rush win rate stats. Um, where if he was on the Giants, I would keep him at three technique. Command those double teams. Let Dexter Lawrence continue to dominate, and just you're going to take up two players uh, at that three technique spot. So you're either going to run towards Dexter Lawrence, or you're going to run at, at Tavondre Sweat, and you're going to have to. Both guys are going to have to command double teams. So he, he's very much like a, a run defender. Um, I guess we just did a, a Tavondre Sweat preview in the pot. But let's start. Let's talk about Justin, these defensive tackles. And we'll start with Michael Hall, defensive tackle out of Ohio State. He's young, 20 years old, 6'3", 290 pounds, 33 and a half inch arms. The box score stats don't look very good. One and a half sacks, two tackles for a loss. He had the second highest pass rush win rate for this defensive tackle class after Gabriel, uh, Gabriel not Gabriel Murphy, Byron Murphy, of the Texas, the other guy from the Texas Longhorns, who's a first-round player, Justin Hall. Yes, is he undersized? But I, I think he plays with good strength. Like he's not going to dominate strength-wise, but he is an athletic defensive tackle who just brings he brings you pass rush pop and that athleticism flashes. And even though the finishing stats aren't there, he has the ability to finish at the quarterback. He has that athleticism. 
He somewhat lives off of his swim with lateral quickness, which you got to add more to that. You got to add more power as a pass rusher. But in the run game, I think he holds up pretty damn well for out of all these undersized guys like Chris Jenkins, whoever, I think he holds up in the run game the best out of all the 280 to 295 pound guys. Yeah, when we were talking about lateral movement with uh, Booker, I, you know, my, my brain went to Michael Hall. Like, that, they, hey, if they're two guys that have the best lateral movement, it's uh, it's those two guys that we're talking about in this episode. So super young, right? Uh, he's 20 right now. He's turning 21 in June. So super young. It's a, it's a Joe Shane candidate. Um, you know, I have down, get across an offensive line's face um, to really get in the backfield. That's what that's what he's going to do. Uh, that's, that's what he's going to do. And he has a lot of his highlight plays or with that. You know, it's kind, it's kind of a long swim. Or I, I don't know. I feel like guys maybe sometimes are taught to make that swim a little bit shorter and not put your arm up in the air. Hey, yeah, his pad little, level rises with it. At least I'm at least I'm taught that because then my, my father was like, oh, you don't want the lineman to you don't want the lineman to get your ribs. They can hit your ribs if you give him if you give him their your whole your whole side of your body. Um, and I also have you know, you know here you can hit, he kind of hits guys with the euro step, which which uh which goes to his lateral movement as well. He's a, he's a gap shooter, um, pass rush specialist, and I think at least the like metric wise he was not like only a, a run stop rate of seventy three percent. So. I it basically a very good pass rush specialist at Ohio State. So, but but I am questioning how he is going to be against the run in the NFL, especially with being a little lighter. Yeah, I mean, down blocks or or double teams beat him. He doesn't get like he doesn't get totally worked. You know, even like Byron Murphy out of Texas, when he gets double teamed, he he gets worked. You don't see that with Michael Hall very often, and he's going to have those quick wins in the run game. Like I posted a clip of him versus Joe Alt where he. Joe Alt's getting a little aggressive. Yeah. He works that move, like you said, gets him on his face, and then and then takes on the puller. Um, and he's he's just constantly fighting to get back into the run play when he has those those one on one blocks in the run game. Is he dominating or winning them? No, but he'll at least kind of get under those pads and, and anchor to where he's not being he's not being just washed out of the play and having a hole widened. But he can be control. He does get controlled pretty consistently in the run game. You know me, Justin, I, I'm not to, as someone who loved Kalijah Kansi, like to me, to play this way, you got to do it. Great. And, and he's good. Yeah. So, which to me tells me you're a, you're a high third round player in Michael Hall jr. And you know. the media consensus has him at 71. Yeah. Which is like, we're, this, the giants have the 70th pick. If they pick him at pick 70. Okay. Let's do it. Um, but he has to become a more complete pass rusher, right? Like he's got to get under guys' pads and work power, right? You yeah. you got to if guys are worried about your speed, you need to get under their fucking pads and and put that threat there. And guess what? That's going to allow the speed and the lateral wins to work better. Uh, but right now he's he's a good pass rushing defensive tackle for his size. He's not a great one, and he's not winning with any strength or size. You know, if he anytime he gets double teamed, he's basically that rep is over for him. He's he's got to get now. He's young, so he has that he has that ability. But I worry with defensive tackles sometimes it takes year three for them to really pop. Anyways, you know we've seen it with Dexter Lawrence. He was good. He really popped off in year three. Dalvin Thomas. He was good. He really popped off in year three. Um, and you've seen that. You know, Derek Brown, who just got his big contract. Like, year three is when he really started to pop off. I worry that Michael Hall is year three or year four is when you really start seeing him play well, and then you got to pay him. Uh, that may not be a bad thing because it worked out for Dex, right? If that, if that's just kind of the way that it goes. But I don't and... think he's going to be as good as Dex right. was his right. first couple of years. Right. Okay. That's fair. You know, year three. Like, Dex was really good those first couple of years, and then year three is when he became an elite player. Yeah, we were talking about Dexter Lawrence not being good or bad. It was just, you're good, but can you be great? Um, he'll, he'll be, I guess he'll be 25, 24, 25, going into year three or year four. So that's still really young. So, yeah, man, it, so much of these guys that we've talked about, you know, Chop Robinson being one of them, Booker being another, and I feel like there's, there's going to be... Uh, you know, at least one or two other guys were going to be like, yeah, it's it's projection. It's not where you are right now, but it's where you can 
it's where you can be. I mean, and that's the that's the fun part about this. Process. And the Giants are in a spot where they they have Dexter Lawrence, right? So they can get that three technique, one gap, pass rusher, defensive tackle, and it's a good it's a good system for uh for that guy. But ideally, you want the guy who can two gap in the run game, yep. who can who can do both for you. The next guy, Justin, that we're going to talk about, Brandon Dorless out of Oregon. A lot of people have him ranked as as an edge, but he's a defensive lineman. He he lined up at defensive line for the most part uh or defensive tackle he, he's gonna play defensive tackle in the nfl 6'3 283 he is like oh an, another light guy man this guy just moves people like he has just power to his game and I, I tweeted about him justin when you watch him it never looks smooth like michael hall it looks smooth a lot of times you know uh we'll look at you know we'll talk about chris jenkins in a second there's times where it looks really smooth with Brandon Dorless, it never is just like, man, look at that clean rep. He just simply has power, and it's just like even Troy Fatanu out of Washington, and he's just like, he is always pushing the pocket in the run game. He's just getting off a block. Like, he's not the best athlete in the world, you would think, for an edge turn defense tackle, but like, he's just as strong as shit and stuns offensive linemen, gets them on their heels. And then you know, keep his hands underneath and just slide off of, off of blocks. You're sold that he's, that he's gonna be, an uh, an interior defensive lineman. Absolutely. At, at most, he's a five technique and a three four. Everywhere that I've looked, they they don't even. You know, you know it's funny. Uh, Br- Brugler has him listed as a defensive tackle, but okay, everywhere well, else, one, I'm agreeing with Dane Brugler. Everyone else is wrong. Everyone else, the consensus board has him as an edge, and he's where? Where do you where do you think he's ranked? My new fa- my my new favorite seventy fifth, seventy ninth. Holy shit, that was pretty good. Um, ahead of uh, Austin Booker, by the way. Um, would you do? Would you have Dorless ranked ahead of Austin Booker? As a year one contributor, probably, but I I I I think Booker is like a, a more of a projection than Dorless. Yeah. Doorless, do you want to know what is that, what the NFL.com uh, comparison is? Boogie Basham. Which is what he would be if he played Edge, but he's not going to play Edge. Yeah. Like, if, um, if he played Edge, that, that is exactly what he would be, where he'd be a very below average athlete on the Edge. He's strong. You know, obviously, Boogie Basham never even got to the point that we hoped Doorless would be at the But he's, he would not have success at the Edge in the NFL. Defensive line, it's not even a, I'm not sitting here saying I'm not guaranteeing he's gonna have success at defensive tackle in the NFL, but I think he can. Um oh my God, how much that's where he, that's where he's gonna be able to make plays at the quarterback. That's where he's just gonna be able to work that power and then you can you can move him around a little bit and, and, and but he's just he just consistently slides off of blocks and, and pushes pockets. How much weight did he add recently? I mean, he's at he was at two eighty three at the combine. Yeah, because they I see him listed as two fifty four. Eh, I, I mean that on what his college football stats? No, on um, no PFF does um they they take stuff from the combine and all right yeah that that's then that's just wrong then so I'm looking at I'm looking at his combine stats and it says two eighty three right now all right so that changes changes a lot for me you know because he looked he. He he looks he does look like he has some bad weight on him. I hey hey say look at the fucking mirror, Panic. But um, yeah, I, I hand strength. I mean that that's the main the main thing that I have down is just his strength. And in, in a class that has some guys with you know a little bit of finesse and even Michael Hall, you know where we're talking about how he has the you know these moves and this lateral movement. Dorless is a guy that I could see the the Giants liking. Um, and Bowen liking because of the strength and the hand strength that he has, um, the ability to engage and then just pull a guy down and yank him down. Plays a little upright and he's long. That's why I also think Bowen will like him too. But he also plays tough. Now again, I have him projected as like I, I do look at him and I'm like, yeah, I, I think you can fit an edge. I think you can be an edge rusher. I think you can stand up and I think you can do this and play strong out there. Because think about this, right? I mean, he's where he's he, bot- he's then he's going to be bottom in every like testing for edge, where defensive tackle he's going to be towards the top. I and think, I mean that's where he played at or like he he yeah did he have edge reps? But go watch him versus USC. Go watch him versus Washington. He's lining up over guards majority of the time. I think his mo is strength, 
I don't think he's going to win with speed and, and all that stuff. So I think his MO is strength. And I think if you put that strength out there against tackles versus the interior, I think it can really, it could possibly do something out there at tackle with the strength and it, the knockback power and all that kind of shit versus the interior. Those like er, those guys are all those guys are strong and shit like that. So that's where I, where I, I can see the, the projection. Yeah. He's just not going to give you any pass rush value if you put him out on the edge. Um, and then if he, if he's not giving you any pass rush, then what is what is even his role? And hey, maybe you don't you just don't think he's a good player, but I I, I mean I I think defensive line is where he gets. But hey, this is the edge D line preview, so he fits in fits into both categories. Um, all right, Justin, let's talk about a Michigan man, Chris Jenkins, national championship. Uh, Chris Jenkins, six foot three, two ninety nine. Uh, he is pretty damn athletic right and he's flexible you know he can bend his get off is quick and consistent he's got like good footwork um but he needs a pass rush plan because right now he's just like a gap penetrator and he's not that like well there's basically no one who can just be fast uh, athletic enough in the defense tackle spot to just be a gap penetrator in the nfl um like i don't, I don't know what you do with chris jenkins no, um, it says he has shorter, shorter arms, but it's they're not. They're he not has really thirty-four inch arms. They're 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 plenty long. Not really that short. Um, his metrics are are pretty damn good too, with eighty-four uh, percent pass rush win rate, ninety-six percent run stop rate. So those are pretty damn good. I think he's really strong. I think he's one of the strongest, if not the strongest player, um, in, in the in this class. So I think that's the stuff that could be able to transfer over to the NFL. And dude, I, I, I think he's I think he's just a bad motherfucker. I can just watch him play. I think he dominates the guys in front of him and he's just a really fun watch. Chris Jenkins? Yeah. Mm. I just You don't see you don't see strength? I, I, I just don't see him bringing like a lot of power to his pass rush. You know, like in the I'm mainly talking about I'm talking like a I think I'm mainly talking about against the run here. Yeah, so in the run, yeah, like he'll get under an offensive lineman's pads and, and their base blocks and, and stop them in their tracks. But double teams like will kind of move them off. Like double teams move them off the spot more than they do Michael Hall Jr. Um, you know, from from the plays that you know from the games that I've watched. Now he does fight to get back into every play. So there's times where he'll be moved off his spot and then and then get back in and make the play. Um, you know, but like a flow with the zone really well. Um, I think he's got a decent nose for the ball. You know, he has 91 tackles over the last two years, but that's in, that's in 29 total games. Uh, I, I don't. I, I I watch him, Justin, and I'm like, man, good athlete, plays with good knee bend, gets under guys' pads. But why aren't we like? I just feel like there should be more f- like finishing at the qu- quarterback. Like you have the good footwork, and hey, that's the thing with him is, if you add the hands which is the thing that you can teach, right? Coaches, scouts look at the feet because the feet are more, are the thing that probably don't get a ton better at the NFL level. Like, let's watch his feet, and then we can add the hand, you know, that we can teach the hands. The hands are very teachable. So he needs that. But, like, so where, where would you, like, if forget even team need, where would you like to take, where would you feel really good about taking Chris Jenkins? <sighs> Not the second round where he's being projected. Yeah, I think second round is is kind of crazy for him. Yeah, because you want it. You if you're gonna take a guy in the second round, you want a guy that can get after really get after quarterback. Which I mean, the Met, you know, hey, he he put up stats and he put up sacks, but we're you know we're, again we're not just looking at what you what you did. We're looking at well, what you could yeah, do in the half NFL. sacks. Yeah. And his, his pass rush run rate is, is for the class is like in like the 18th to 23rd rate yeah. or so. Yeah. Now that includes a lot of the small school guys, which is, I wish you could just, I wish you could just filter out guys who are not going to get drafted, but that's not how it works. Um. So yeah, I, I'm just not huge on Chris Jenkins. I think he can be a solid player in the NFL. He's, he's got all the ability in the world, you know, four, nine, one forty, um, you know, 29 bench press reps, you know, and, and again, he's got 34 inch arms. It's just you've 
he's got to figure it out. But hey, he's got good footwork. He's got the athleticism. He's flexible. You know, he consistently gets off the ball quickly. It's just it's just putting it together. The next where's guy the, is the ultimate. Where's the consensus happen? Um, fifty-five, forty-nine. Ooh, yeah, that's that's too high for me. All right, the next guy on this list, Justin, or the, la- the next two guys are top thirty visits for the New York Giants. And this one, I actually mocked to the Giants earlier in the off season, and that's LSU defensive tackle Mason Smith, six foot five, three hundred six pounds, thirty five inch arms, Justin. If there was any player in this draft who is the projection who I would just be like, I want Andre Patterson to get his hands on him, right? And we talk about how Andre Patterson get, you know, gets his hands on guys and, and, and really makes them better players at the defensive line spot. It is Mason Smith because he is so up and down. The highs are really high, right? If he gets off the ball really well, if he shoots his hands, he's strong as hell. He's, he's going to knock you back. He's going to have, you know, work some pass rush moves here and there. But there's a lot of times where he doesn't get off the ball quick. Guys get into his pads and he gets, you know, moved in double teams. Um, You know, like he, like he doesn't get moved in double teams, but like he gets controlled, right? Where it's like, hey, they're not pushing him back five yards, but they're, they're getting this block done the way they want to. But whenever he, you know, strikes, extends, and reads... I mean, he's like a he's a two gap player who gives you some pass rush, like potential. Like he is the ultimate. Get Andre Patterson's hands on this guy. I'm gonna ask you something. Same episode that we did last year. There was somebody that I really liked that you hated. That basically I just said the same thing about. Who is that player? Was it Mojo Aromo or whatever? No, the Texas guy. No. Who? Gervin Gerv- Dexter. Ger- yes. Yes. That's is that not who you just described? Now I think Dexter's a little bit taller. No, I agree, um, but people were mocking Der- Gervin no. Dexter in like the top of the second round. Where did he wind up going? In this, I think he went in the second round to the Bears. Like, and I, I, he went and, to the and Bears. he had an all right rookie year, but Gervin Dexter, it was just I'd never seen someone get off the ball slower than it was what crazy. Gervin Dexter did. It was Where crazy. Mason Smith, he there's he's inconsistent with his get off, but. He flashes it where Gervin Dexter never flashed that. Right, but you don't still invest in traits, and it's like you still can see. Hey, I I think he did flash it. I'll I'll, I'll disagree with that with Dexter. Like there were some plays where it's like, holy shit, you're just moving people, and it looks like you're playing a different game despite you being so slow and getting off the ball so slow. So yeah, so this Mason Smith kind of reminds me of Gervon Dexter with untapped potential and playing at a high pad level. You know, being, you know, so so big and so tall and kind of playing at a high pad level. Former five-star recruit, which I, I recently saw something that if you were like all these five-star recruits that came out of high school and just all of them are first-round picks, first-round picks, first-round picks, it's kind of crazy. Um, and same arm length, but he has really bad metrics, like those really bad metrics of run-stop rate and pass-rush win rate. Um, he has reckless hands, but they look strong and they try to be active. So I agree, this is like a ball of clay that we have right now. Where, I like Andre Patterson, I could see him getting his hands on him and and doing some good things with him. So literally, copy and paste all the Gervon Dexter talking points last year, and it's the same for Mason Smith. And I can't help but just agree with everything that you just said. Where do you think the media uh, has him consensus? Mm, like one hundredth? No. I'm gonna give Where? you another guess. It's higher. It's it's sixty uh, sixth. Really? Yeah. And I don't think it's been that high. I, that must that must be recent. He now, peaked he did, at 65, yeah. He did take a top 30 visit with the Giants. Um, so that means that they are interested in him. They didn't bring him in there for nothing. Um, he is someone who... Like, again, when you watch his film, 70% of it is not that good. But the 30% of it that is good is like, oh my God. Like, yeah. This this guy can be a beast. So I and I, I think that's a good guy to have a top thirty visit on. Like what? Tell why isn't it? Why is it not consistent with you? Um, because he had like again another guy who was like who was a I guess he's viewed as a day two guy. But like let's say he was day three, like he was probably looked at earlier in all this process. If he's a, like who is a day three guy who can really figure it out? To me, it's Mason Smith because he, he has all all the ability in the world. It's just about. 
and I, and I think Gervin Dexter, like you said, is a, is a good comp. But are you taking Mason Smith at the top of the second round? Where I think Gervin, like, where, let's, let me look up where Gervin Dexter went drafted. Like, you you would take him at the top of the second round? And forget the Giants' needs. No, no. Not with somebody who, you know, literally, like the the metrics are, um. Yeah, round two, pick 22, so middle of the second round. Run stop rate of 30%, pass rush win rate of 83%. Yeah, I mean, he, de- de- all right, you know, decent pass rush, but just uh, against the run was bad, like really bad. Yeah, and he does it, you don't see him like, oh my God, look at him get his ass kicked. He just gets controlled and doesn't find his way, um, uh, you know, to the ball. Like, my note is not moved on combo blocks, but is controlled. When he strikes and extends, has dominant reps. Yeah. Like, hard to move in the run game with with base blocks. Also, something important to note. Um, his 2022 season ended short by a torn ACL. So that means 2023 was the first year coming off the ACL. So that means 2024, body is fully healthy. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's part of the projection. I think that's part of the top 30 visit with him. It's like, okay, well, he wasn't, he wasn't fully healthy. Now, he's not a wide receiver or a running back where... That could be a little more relevant, but um, we'll see. But if if there was anybody, I guess you said what his consensus is sixty six. Yes, I'm tempted, but not not there. But I'm. So I, I thought I'm he tempted was lower. By the if, if he was lower, he would be like, "Hey, who do you want to come out of this episode with?" It would be him. But if it's at, if he's being put in, if it's a third round pick, like I feel like there might be a bigger swing there. To be had. All right, Justin, let's talk about someone who is a, a day three pick and another top 30 visit for the New York Giants. And that's Christian Boyd, the defense attacker out of Northern Iowa. He wasn't a combine invite, but he did um have a pro day. Six foot two, 329 pounds. Uh in Northern I went and watched him versus North Dakota State and South Dakota State. He has a quick first step and he has great upper body strength. Like you could tell he's strong as shit, but I don't think the lower body strength is, is matching what he's doing up there. Like a lot of his plays end up in upper body wrestling matches, but he strikes really well. Like he's got a strong first punch to strike and extend. Um, he just doesn't have like the ability to finish play. Like even if even if he's just trying to push the pocket, it'll start good, but it, it dies out. And I watched you know Mason McCormick, who's like a guard in this class out of South Dakota State. He handled him pretty well. With him, so I view I view Christian Boyd as a day three pick, but he's got, you know, that upper body strength that Andre Patterson uh, desires to get and work with. Yeah, his arms are, are are really short. That that's that's one of the main things. Thirty one and and seven eighths, but he plays like a wrecking ball. He he just runs into shit and then he just runs everybody over. Um, so that's like that's like the main thing that I saw. Um, I, I don't like how he. So part of that like note is he does even on a lot of his highlight plays, he'll just run into people without maybe trying to fully separate, and he kind of just relies on on the strength of the upper body strength, where it's like there's not really a lot of technique going on here. But certainly a, an exciting kind of ball of clay, strong player um, to be you know excited about. And like I will say, I I don't know if this is a, a, you know a Walter football thing or or, or what, or if this is a intentional thing by the Christian Boyd team if you if you were to control F Christian Boyd his name pops up 14 times I think possibly more than definitely out of day three picks this is the most top 30 visits that I've seen and it's like the I think Saints, it's because he wasn't invited to the combine yeah so this is all reported um this is all reported that the Bills the Saints the Ravens the Dolphins uh the Packers the Lions all these teams have had top 30 visits with him so, oh, I, mean, I I called it a top 30 visit when it's a 30 visit. It's a top so. 30 visit. Stop this. We're not, I've seen people in the media stop calling it top 30. If you if you went and explained to someone, uh, they this guy did a 30 visit. And you're like, a what? <laughs> top 30 visit explains what it is. Yes, we know We know you're not fucking putting your top 30, your big board together and like, all right, top 30, come in. We, we all know that. But it's like your top priority to come in and visit. It's a top 30 visit. Yeah. I'll never not call it that. Um. Uh, so, all right, Justin, that's an episode for Edge D-Line. We got safety coming on Friday. So, you know, we did quarterback. 
we combined wide receiver tight end and D-line edge, but we got we got eight just safeties that we are going to attack head on to apply directly to the forehead. So anything else before we get out of here? No. Um, Chris Jenkins, uh, Colin Jenkins is his uncle, and his father was also an NFL player too. Um, what, what else did I – there was something else that I wanted to say. And I think I know I think that was it. I think that was the one note that I wanted to say. All right. We'll be back on Friday. We appreciate you guys. We will see you then. Until then, let's go big blue. <laughs>